with Inside Out 2 sitting at about 1.2 billion. If Despicable Me 4 just gets up to 600 million in the same time frame, it's holding its own. What I do want to talk about here below that, Despicable Me 4 expands to 230 million global, Inside Out 2 at 1.21 billion worldwide. Now the biggest movie of all time in Mexico, over 80 million in Mexico is what it's raked in. Really? Yeah, it's done extremely well, but Despicable Me 4, 230 million global is where it's at now. Uh, Despicable Me 4 tops the July 4th holiday box office with a mighty 122.6 million. Again, that's an, that's an estimate. We'll get real figures tomorrow or Tuesday. They are saying uh, it carries a relatively economical budget of $100 million, which should make it very profitable for the companies behind it to say nothing of all the Minions merch they will sell. This is something, Tom, you and I have talked about a number of times. We continue to remind folks this is a this is a big distinction now, especially in 2024, uh, for other movie studios like Universal with properties like Minions versus a lot of the Disney properties. We don't know right now the merchandise powerhouse or perhaps lack thereof that is inside out too it's one thing when when kids and i mean I, I don't mean that in a derogatory manner obviously inside out 2 and despicable me are kids geared movies but when kids go see something like inside out 2 are those young girls because we know that inside out 2 is resonating strongly with younger female audiences, say 24 to 16. That is a huge core base for them. I'm a father of two girls in that age range. Basically a demographic that ain't buying toys and dolls. Yeah, here's the thing. I've got two daughters and neither one of them have come home with any kind of inside out to merch. And when you talk from a, 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 a profitability metric standpoint you look at the the level one or the tier one people that hey we're gonna go buy a movie ticket we're gonna go see the movie and then you have tier two and three which move down the ranks which get deeper into the actual financial uh, uh impact side of things where then they they leave the movie theater and then they go to target then they go to walmart then they go to sam's club whatever the case costco whatever and they buy a piece of merch that is licensed and affiliated with the film. Right. I'm not seeing a lot of that yet. I could be mistaken. I haven't really seen any that toys yet. at like my local Walmart and it's a smaller one. So they really only carry the major, major stuff. Yeah. Um, minions on the other hand, different story, you know, and I didn't even really think about this until we just kind of started talking about this conversation. Yeah, Despicable Me came out and, and didn't do as well as you and I thought it probably could or should have. But we're also comparing a fourth film, actually technically what, a fifth or sixth film if you sixth. Count movies. Thank you, Tom. Exactly. And a series That's where I was going compared next. to two. And this franchise has been able to stay relevant now since its inception, right? You're, and I think you're on, right. I on. think you're onto something. I would love to see the demographic breakdown on Inside Out 2. I think you're onto something there. I think it's probably a lot like Toy Story 3, where I think that one also skewed a little bit older because you had a lot of the people that were going to see it, I think, that were more so kids that grew up with it that are now yep. adults. Yep. And and look, Tom, you and I both know this. We're old 80s kids. Uh, we're, we're 80s toy aficionados. Um, we talk about things like, you know, TMNT and Transformers and He-Man, stuff like that. And the girls had their brands too, right? They had Barbie. Right. And back in those days, they had My Little Pony. They had Rainbow Bright, Strawberry Shortcake. We know what sold back then. I don't know if Inside Out 2, at least in my observation, and I, I will admit casual observation to this point, but I haven't seen anything out there in the ether, the news ether, that is suggesting otherwise. 
I'm not saying that nobody is buying or, you know, teenage girls aren't buying inside out to toys. But when you look yeah. at the age demographic, right? right? When you look at the core of this film is, I mean, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 into the mm -hmm. early 20 year old girls. Yep. Are they buying stuffed animals and plushies at the point? Not really. Or are they buying t-shirts for these kind of things? I don't think they are either. I'm not, not seeing likely. it out there that does. Whereas with Despicable Me 4, let me tell you what, one of the things that has been virtually indestructible for the last decade in the merchandising industry, one of the things that has been considered virtual evergreen property has been those stupid little yellow. Memes. I was just going to say, if you got any yeah. kid from the age of zero to, to 12, you probably have something minion in your house. Damn you right. Guarantee it. And that's my, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And of course the profit margins and the revenue stream from major lucrative merchandising licensing is far bigger. That profit margin is way bigger. Has Pixar ever really been a merchandising juggernaut outside of cars and toy story? That's what? my big question. Uh, okay. I've never yeah. really seen them be like, you know, oh, we're selling tons of Bugs Life toys. You know I mean? like, no, you're right. You're right. And that, that's just it. And I was about to say, you you hit the nail on the head with Toy Story and Cars. Cars was a monster when it came that's to That's why much. we got four movies out of it or whatever. Yeah. Right. Cars was a freaking monster because what was that geared for? The boys. boys. And they love the cars. And my kid was one of those, right? He, he loved yes. the Hot Wheels. So that was the perfect boys them will to do. dump money on that kind of stuff right um girls tend to be um from all historical observation with rare exception again things like barbie right um girls tend to be more of that tier one where they go to the movies they watch the movie oh my god i love it if the girls actually pump a movie outside of the theater mm -hmm. it's because of the soundtrack I was just going to say Frozen, Frozen is a great was, example. Well, yeah. not only that, Frozen probably sold more cosplay stuff yeah. than it did actual figures or anything like that. I'm willing I think to Frozen sold a good bit of it because you had those strong female characters. But there's the, a, the thing is, I've heard, difference. though, is that girls love to do the cosplay stuff a bit more. Like, that's the thing I've heard that sells more for girls, right? Like, not so much yeah. toys, not so much figures, not play sets. Yeah. yeah, certain dolls, if they're Barbie-like and they can change their clothes and they can mess with their hair, those tend to be popular. But from what I've seen and heard in more recent years from all my sales figures and stuff that I've went through is girls tend to go more with, you know, the, the, the princess uniforms and whatever you want to call them, right? Like, that's why you go to Walmart and they have a whole section <laughs> of just the princess yeah. uniforms or whatever you want to call costumes, whatever, you know. Yeah, I, I think so, too. Um, but Minions is one of those things that just this is a huge thing for Universal. Remember how we talked about what was it last year when the last Transformers movies came out mm -hmm. uh, to give everybody a kind of an example, even though the Transformers movies don't do at least the last couple of two or three, they don't do great in the theater. They don't they don't really make a lot of profit or they lose money for Hasbro and the affiliated movie studio, which I think is Paramount. The one thing it does is when they put those movies out, it it absolutely accelerates. It explodes the toy sales for Transformers. And Hasbro typically has banner years for Transformer toy sales when those movies come out. So that's where they make their nut. Um, I don't know if that happens with every Disney Pixar movie, although originally when they were made, that was kind of a natural progression from it, but it hasn't happened. Despicable right. Me 4 with Universal, this reinvigorates Minions stuff constantly. I mean, these are these well, are and Minions big aims towards a big, uh, a bit younger audience too, which helps, right? Because you're always exactly. getting a new crop of three year old. boys and girls, <laughs> like yeah, and girls, the, yeah, yeah. I mean, boys and girls both love the Minions, and that's the difference. So, and here's the thing: when you have a 100 million dollar production budget on Despicable Me 4, which is right in line with everything we've seen before. Um, 
Minions Rise of Gru was about 90 million. This was about 100 million. This is, as you mentioned earlier, Tom, correctly, the sixth, uh, the sixth entry in this series. So unlike Inside Out 2, that's literally just the second, that's a one follow-up movie nine years later. This is the sixth entry in this franchise. The merchandising is still enormous. And even though it didn't come out of the gate as hot as Inside Out 2, which was a very big surprise for everybody, we've covered that here the last couple of weeks, Disney has a genuine hit, the first real hit Disney has had in five years since the pandemic, uh, since 2019. This is still doing extremely well. The bottom line is, is that if, you know, right now with Inside Out 2 uh, sitting at about $1.2 billion, uh, if Despicable Me 4 just gets up to $600 million in the same time frame, in a relative comparison in terms of just production budget, it's doing, it's holding its own because of how much cheaper it was. Right. And let's not forget that Universal Studios, this is going to go to Netflix in about six months, six to eight months. And Netflix is going to pay Universal uh, a big, fat check, probably close to $100 million dollars in, in, in that in that area to get this on there for an extended period of time, at least during the pay one window, maybe even if it's 50 million, right? You look at this now, the budget was 100 million. They raked in 230 this weekend. They're taking home around, let's say 110 million of this, 110 to 115 million of this, maybe a little closer to 120 given the weight to the domestic box office. If they spent another 100 million on global marketing, maybe even a little bit more than that, um, they're going to be good. Universal is in great shape, especially when you start chunking on the merchandising licensing. So I think that's a that's a big takeaway from this uh, that's going well. We thought months ago, and I, I will do the mea culpa right now for the record, because people say, "Oh well, Val, you never come back, you never talk about it." I'm gonna do it right now. I thought that this movie was going to uh, absolutely uh, beat Inside Out 2. It probably won't. Um, Inside Out 2 was a humongous surprise uh, because we didn't calculate. You know, we were looking at it kind of through a, a very pragmatic, generic lens. But that movie, wow. Inside Out 2 from Pixar, resonated with those teenage girls because it dealt with a lot of teenage girl emotions that we didn't we didn't realize how big a hook that was going to be with things like anxiety and insecurity and blah 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 and on and on i think that's what's driven the audience well and i'm not um, making excuses for them. I'll, I'll i'll say it flat out like just by pure numbers alone by everything that's happened there was nothing for any of us to believe any other reason otherwise than right. inside out 2 was gonna underperform Right. Even they were expecting it to underperform a bit. Now, that's it. That being said, I think you keyed in on the main points here today. And I, I especially want to start seeing the demographics on this because I think you're 100% right. This is one of those films, like with Barbie, that is whatever you want to call it proof right now because the main audience for it is the audience that's pushing for a lot of the DEI type bullshit. Yeah. Right. For lack of a better way of putting it. So, like with Barbie, Barbie did well because you had a lot of, you know, 24 to 35 or plus women going to see this movie. I yeah. think you're, you're dead on. It's a little bit younger demographic here. I, yeah. I, I agree with you, but well, I we think saw... it's the same thing. I think you're right. It's like that 15 to 16 age to probably 35 demographic of women mainly pushing this box. Well, we saw it in the first week, Tom, and that's why I mentioned that specific age range is because when Inside Out 2 debuted a few weeks ago, Deadline, uh, with their exit polling tracking with places like uh, a post track and intelligence and all this kind of stuff, uh, who I was shocked, the average ticket price for Inside Out 2 was approaching like a Marvel movie opening. Uh, there was a lot of older kids like older teenagers that's how we knew when they said the biggest demographics when you looked at like 
I think 13 to 18 and then 18 to 34. That was the heart and soul. And it seemed to, it seemed to really uh, coalesce in those mid ranges between the two. So say like 16 to 28 in there, which makes sense because my oldest daughter, who is almost 19 years old, she was roughly 10 when the first movie came out and she was very interested in this movie. It's like, I want to see where Riley went. I loved this movie when I was a little girl. And I want to go see now, you know, she just finished her first year at college. So I'm like, oh, when she started talking to me about that, the the week the movie was about to debut, that's when I started thinking, I'm like, oh crap. I this I this never crossed my mind. I'm thinking like a 45-year-old guy, like a dad. Um this is actually going to hit a demographic that I didn't anticipate. Because when you usually think about like Disney Pixar movies and Disney animated movies, you think about a broad scope of, of impact for children. But that's not what this movie was. And whether Pete Docter and, and Pixar you know, expected that to be the case, maybe they did. Maybe they knew exactly what they were going for, but it actually worked. Despicable Me 4. Um, and the reason I thought this was going to do better was because this appeals to a much broader demographic than does um, uh, the Inside Out 2 in particular. But again, and this is the key, and I'll say it again to wrap this segment up. Um, the difference is, is that even though Inside Out 2 looks like it's performing much more like Barbie, which is insane. I never would have thought that. You know, we totally missed that mark. I'm I'm happy to admit, hey, we 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 did a swing and a miss. We absolutely whiffed on that one. Fine, but I would expect I wouldn't be the least bit surprised, and I would put money on the fact that Despicable Me and the Minions and all this kind of stuff is going to do a much more robust tier two, tier three audience performance. And by that, again, in merchandising terms, we're talking about the kids that leave the theater and then go to Target and then go to Walmart and then go to Costco and they buy the toy. They buy the sleeping bag. They buy the Minions doll. They buy the T-shirt. That has always been the powerhouse of this franchise. And it's going to be interesting to see in the next few weeks how this plays out because... This has a pretty clear run, and if we go back to the uh, the main screen here for the numbers, just to show you how well, again, credit where credit is due. We call balls and strikes here on Valiant Renegade. We love to, to piss in Disney's cornflakes because they earn it so much, but they have a good one here. So again, got to call balls and strikes. Have to be fair. Inside Out 2, 30 million on its fourth weekend, uh, which is, you know, the opening weekend here for Despicable Me 4, which is, it's jaded because it actually opened on a Wednesday. So Despicable Me 4's three-day weekend at $75 million is not, it's hard to compare that to the three-day opening weekend of Inside Out 2, which opened on a true Thursday, Friday, as opposed to Despicable Me, which opened on Tuesday previews, before the Wednesday or, or excuse me, Wednesday with Tuesday previews in front of the July 4th holiday on Thursday. So it's more stretched out. So Despicable Me had a 120, 223 million opening weekend, five day versus Inside Out 2's 155 opening three day weekend uh, that didn't have a holiday in there. So again, I want to give it a few weeks to see how close this gets. I, Despicable Me 4, hopefully, will get to uh, close to or a little over a billion dollars. But again, given their $100 million production budget, Universal is really good with this. And their lucrative post-theatrical contract with Netflix during the pay one window. This is why Universal keeps winning con well, uh, consistently. There is a way, like, and I'm, again, I'm, I don't think this will happen, but this is just let's play devil's advocate for a moment. Yeah. Like let let's say your theory is correct, and I I, I think you're right that a lot of the reason uh, Inside Out Two is doing as well as it is is because of this certain demographic. A lot of that demographic is going to fall off when Deadpool opens. 
So th- there is a world scenario here where Despicable Me 4 has legs and could even leg out Inside Out 2, even though Inside Out 2 had the bigger burst in the opening, right? I mean, it's yeah. just, you're looking at a situation in a scenario right now is that Inside Out 2 didn't have an Inside Out 2 to open up against, right? That's it. Yeah, that's yeah. it. So, I mean, it, it's a little bit different scenario. I could see the, it, the Despicable Me 4 playing a little longer. I want to see end, how I could be wrong. I could very you know, well be wrong. So no, I think you're no, I, you have a great point there, Tom. I think it's going to be interesting to see how, how inside out Two continues. It's had a great leg from its opening till now. I'm going to be interested to see how well it continues to leg. Now that despicable me four is out. Um, and, and to see it's at 1.2 million now or 1.2 billion pardon worldwide. I think this, in theory, should finish up close to 1.5, close to Barbie. Uh, and then let's see where Despicable Me goes because Despicable Me will be a lot fresher by the time Deadpool and Wolverine comes out. And, of course, Despicable Me uh, 4 is going to be far more of the fresher counter-programming to Deadpool and Wolverine. You know, a raunchy, R-rated a violent adult action superhero flick versus a goofy for the whole family kids comedy, right? That should that should hopefully hold up pretty well for the next uh you know month or so. 